As you know, the president and the first lady visited the synagogue in Pittsburgh, the Tree of Life synagogue, that was attacked on Saturday. Eleven people who were murdered at that synagogue. The man in custody, a virulent, virulent and apparently violent anti-Semite. Uh, Frank Gaffney, who we talk to regularly, the founder and president of the Center for Security Policy in Washington, D.C. Frank, I understand you used to live near that synagogue in, in uh, uh, Pittsburgh. I did, Lars. I, I passed by it uh, practically every day of my childhood uh, as I went that way to go to school. It was uh, it was a fixture in the community in which I grew up. And, you know, interestingly enough, Lars, it was a place where I first saw a sign that has uh, inspired me lately to focus on a, a related topic. But it, it was a sign that said, Save Soviet Jews. And I've been thinking about it. You know, this was obviously not only an expression of, you know, what people of faith do at their best, which is care about others, but it was a reminder now that a community that used to worry about Jews in the Soviet Union now has to, like Jews in Europe, uh, even worry about, you know, their safety in our own country. And this is a very, very bad, you know, sign of what has been happening in terms of uh, the rising, not only anti-Semitism, but uh, anti-Israel sentiment, uh, and and more generally, uh, I, I think a, a hatred for people who uh, aren't of, uh, well, frankly, uh, primarily aren't of the left uh, or aren't Sharia supremacists uh, who are often allied with the left. And that's uh, that's a very worrying as I say, statement about what's happening in our country more broadly. Yeah, because you've warned us for a long time that uh, with the rise of Sharia law in in various places in the Middle East, with uh, hints of it, at least in in parts of Western Europe, like France and even in England, that we worry here about folks, you know, handing out offensive leaflets or, or, uh, you know, they'll go and they'll, they'll vandalize the synagogue. Uh, but we don't as often hear about people literally committing murder, although Seattle had a murder that was aimed at, at Jewish citizens uh, not too many years ago. And I guess I just wonder, are people aware that that, that is going to seem small by comparison if Sharia law takes root? Because under Sharia law, uh, both Christians and Jews uh, are going to be uh, are going to be uh, uh, the, the targets at that point. And I, and I also want you to tie that in with answering why you think there may have been a, a really dramatic rise in the number of, of active of anti-Semitism and hatred toward Jews lately. Or has there been? Well, I think there are reportedly uh, more. Um, certainly in Europe, it's unmistakable. And I think that has an awful lot to do, Lars, with the rising presence and increasingly emboldened attitude of uh, these Sharia supremacists. You know, they've, they've poured into Europe uh, by the millions. Um, not all Muslims are Sharia supremacists, as we've talked about. Uh, we're talking about a subset of them. But unfortunately, there are there are hundreds of millions of people who believe that this uh, totalitarian, brutally repressive, anti-Semitic, uh, misogynistic, homophobic, um, you know, uh, intolerant, doctrine of uh, authoritative Islam is uh, is being practiced increasingly in Europe. And it's creating, I think, an environment that's dangerous there, much as we're seeing in other parts of the world. It's, uh, it's, it's dangerous for both Jews and Christians. And as I said, that sign outside the synagogue uh, Tree of Life in Squirrel Hill, community of Pittsburgh, inspired an effort that I've been involved in uh, called the Save the Persecuted Christians coalition. And we're looking at, in addition to what Jews are experiencing, 215 million Christians around the world are being heavily persecuted. I don't mean they're just having a hard time getting a job or, you know, people are unpleasant to them. I'm talking about people are being tortured or raped or uh, driven from their homes or uh, crucified or, or murdered en masse. And that is part and parcel of what's going on. It's not just, let me be clear, it's not just Islamists who are doing it, but an awful lot of them are are meeting this fate at the hands of those folks. And we need to be alive to the fact that it's uh, it's it's creeping. 
uh, through various parts of the Western world. Just as an example, Lars, if I could, just one other excursion on this. Just this past week, a good friend of mine, a woman by the name of Elizabeth Sabadish wolf of Austria, uh, was found by the European Court of Human Rights to have transgressed by speaking about the Prophet Muhammad exercising her freedom of speech, which she has the right to do. It's not constitutionally guaranteed as here, but even in Europe, you have a right um, under their you know, human rights convention to speak. But apparently, according to the court, not if you offend others' religious feelings, as they put it. Well, that's Sharia blasphemy, and that is the leading edge of the effort to force, uh, you know, uh, civilization to uh, submit to this Sharia doctrine and program. It's hey, very worrying. It is very. Uh, let me throw another idea at you, and this one's one. That I this just occurred to me as you were speaking about that, Frank. You remember how we've worried over the last couple of years? Did the Soviet Union try to use Facebook and other social media? Uh, sorry, not the Soviet Union, Russia. Uh, did they use it to try to change the outcome of an election? And we all said, well, their, their efforts were kind of puny, uh, but, you know, we don't want people doing that anyway, uh, having a foreign power trying to interfere with our elections. I heard a discussion the other night that was talking about the fact that an awful lot of these anti-Semites like Robert Bowers, uh, you know, the guy who said uh, all the Jews must die as he was being taken into custody at the synagogue on Saturday, they've been pushed off con- most conventional social media Because social media sites like Twitter and Facebook say, we don't want you on here. So they've gone to other alternate ones that are more, you know, wild, wild west when it comes to you can say anything you want. And they said that's, you know, in some ways that's good because it gets them away from the conventional sites where most of the people are focusing in their social media. But it's bad in the sense that they almost disappear from public view until they pop up doing something like what Robert Bowers is accused of doing. And it occurred to me. If you are in the Middle East and you are a Sharia law, you know, uh, uh, proponent or adherent, and you said, how can we screw things up in America and how can we advance our cause? Because they clearly hate Israel and hate the Jewish people. One of the ways they might do it, and they could do it from a distance, would be to get on social media and encourage the Robert Bowers of the world, couldn't they? But is anybody even looking for that phenomena? I, I think people are, uh, perhaps not enough and uh, maybe not aggressively enough. But uh, uh, let me add, just add something to, to round out what you've said, yeah. Lars, because it seems to me that it's at least as problematic that uh, while uh, the social media platforms, the Googles, the Facebooks, the Twitters and so on, are are migrating the Robert Bowers off of their pages on the grounds that they're saying violent or hateful things, they're also – using the Southern Poverty Law Center, which is a political warfare instrument of the left to try to keep people like, well, me, for example, from using their platforms and speaking truthfully and factually about the dangers that we're facing from some of the left's uh, operatives and and their their mates in the Sharia supremacist camp. So we've got a lot of challenges on uh, on the the communication about political speech or or even just factual speech and keeping bad people from doing bad things with social media platforms is an estimable cause not allowing good people to use those platforms simply because they're speaking truthfully about problems we all need to be addressing is not so good. No, it's not so good at all. Frank, thank you.